Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here for the power to flur, power to flur, power to fly, chat and learn. Okay, thanks for joining. Welcome. My name is Hunter. My pronouns are he, they, and who knows what pronunciation is going to come out of my mouth today. So before we jump into this amazing panel, we have a little bit of housekeeping. So you can participate. Please feel free to turn on your cameras. Some of you are already doing that. That's awesome. It's a great way for the folks at Datadog and myself to connect with you. You can ask questions during this. Uh, they are hiring. So it's a great way to connect with the folks that we're chatting with today. Uh, you will pop up on the recording uh, if you do turn your camera on, just so you know. And we will send a follow-up link of this recording in the coming days if you want to rewatch it, share it, all the great things. Uh, throughout the hour, you can ask questions in the chat publicly. Uh, please keep in mind this is a shared space. So be mindful of inclusive language so that we can all have a great session. And if you'd like to ask a question anonymously, you can message me privately. Go over to the chat box, select my name, Hunter. And then you can DM me and I'm happy to ask something on your behalf anonymously. Or if you have any questions or concerns that are coming up, you can reach out to me in that way as well. And you can keep up with us on social media at Power to Fly on all the things and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are so many awesome resources on there. So I highly encourage you to check it out. Okay, without further ado, we have Data Dog today, which is an awesome company that I'm very excited to be chatting with uh, two folks from it. And you can check out this here is our landing page with Datadog on the Power to Fly website. Uh, you can see great uh, info about them. You can read more about their details. You can see all the job listings that are available. It's a great way to apply for the jobs as well, because they can see that you are part of the Power to Fly family and that will show up when they are reviewing your resume and info. So without further ado, we have Samantha Sample. There's Samantha there. Hi, Samantha. Uh, Samantha first joined Datadog three years ago as an intern before returning as a full-time software engineer in 2001. She has previously worked at companies such as Google and Girls Who Code. Outside of work, she volunteers as a teacher assistant in New York public schools, helping to teach coding to high school students. So awesome. Welcome, Samantha. And Sherzad is currently a software engineer at Datadog. He has been with Datadog for four years and started his career in tech as a solutions engineer. Coming from a non-traditional background as a behavioral therapist, and loss prevention agent, Shirzad was able to transfer his skills and successfully navigate his career into the tech world. Both inspiring stories. I love this. I'm so excited to jump in with you two. Welcome, Samantha and Shirzad. Uh, Samantha, we'll start with you. Before we jump into questions, just can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Brief bio there that I read. Would love to hear how you're doing today, where you're calling in <laughs> from, Maybe a fun fact. <laughs> um, yeah, so like my bio said, I, I first joined Datadog a few years ago. I interned um, back in 2020, and I work on the authentication team here at Datadog. So everything to do with like logging in and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's been great. I work in a New York office so i'm in the new york office right now actually i saw shirzad earlier at lunch <laughs> so we're familiar um but yeah um a fun fact about me um i would say is that i'm allergic to normal toothpaste so i use special <laughs> special toothpaste um yeah Happy to be here. That is a fun fact. That's great for two truths and a lie as well. That's, <laughs> a, that's a solid one to have in your back pocket. That's good. Uh, Shirzad, welcome. How are you? Thank you. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. I'm also based out of the New York City office. Been with Data Dog for about four years now. She has been an amazing journey. I come from a non-traditional tech background. Um, 
So you guys saw in the bio from behavioral therapy, loss prevention, and a bunch of other stuff, which are not relevant to, relevant to tech at all. So yeah, it's been a great journey. A fun fact about me. Um, I love playing sports. Doesn't matter what sport, um, but I do not enjoy watching them. Yeah. <laughs> that is very interesting. I love that fun fact. Oh, that's fun. That's so interesting. Huh? Yeah. You're, you're a doer. You're a yeah. doer. You, you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> Man of action, person of action. Okay, friends. So the way the next 55 minutes are going to work is we have a list of pre-submitted questions that a bunch of y'all sent in advance. We put them on a sheet. They've been anonymized, so I don't know who wrote them. So we're going to go down those questions. Thank you so much for submitting them. They are awesome questions. And if you have any questions that come up while we're talking, drop it in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. And we will pepper those in as we go along as well. So the topic today is top tips to grow your career in engineering. So let's let's get right into it. So someone wrote, what are some critical soft skills that have helped you advance in your engineering career? Now, Shirzad, I'm going to pitch it to you first because I love your story of transitioning from a very different field. And yet here you are and it's working out, sounds like pretty great. So talk to me maybe about those soft skills that applied for you and maybe some ones that other people might not even realize that they have that would help transfer them over. For sure. Yeah. Some of the most important ones I could think of is uh, adaptability. I think it's very important in tech to be able to adapt to new tools, new technologies, even new teammates. Um, things are so fast paced. It's always changing. So it's nice to be adaptable. Along the same lines, it's good to have problem solving skills and it's not just technical problem solving skills. It could be interpersonal. It could be, um, yeah, something related to inter being interpersonal. Um, and along again, like along the same lines, I would say communication is key because being able to solve the problem is one thing, but being able to communicate it efficiently is another thing. So having that communication skills is very important as well in regards to growth. I am muted. Samantha, is there anything you'd like to share on this topic of transferable soft skills that helped you advance in, in your career? Um, yeah, I think Sherzad had a few really good ones. I would add um, just being like curious, um, starting a new role and just, you know, learning what you can about the task that you're doing, but also trying to take it a step further with looking beyond just like the work that's immediately around you, but being curious about the work that other people are doing or the work that came before the work that you're doing or it's supposed to come after the work that you're doing. So I think that can help. Um, and also just being like friendly and nice. I think that goes a long way at work. Um, everyone likes working with nice people no matter what your background or skill level is. So, Yeah, it really is kind of amazing how some of the simplest things can go so far of just holding the door open for someone. I'll go get mm -hmm. that cup of coffee for you. How was your day? You know, just these simple yeah. things can go a really long way because I think it's easy for at least myself to get wrapped up in my own world and just like, oh, I don't have time to be nice for two seconds. And that's, that's <laughs> really not true. You know, we can always make time to just put a little moment of effort in, right? And I love too the curiosity aspect, Samantha. Are there ways that like, like what in the past like week or month, what were some moments maybe that you used your curiosity and you're like, oh, that's it in action. And this is helping me with mm -hmm. something. Um. I would say one place that it helps me is like in general, an example I'll give from like the most, the past couple of weeks is that um, as a company, we do like quarterly OKR. So like every few months teams get together and write, write down their goals for the next few months. So there's no requirement on my desk to go and read what the other teams are doing but I kind of take it 
upon myself to look at some other teams that maybe are not my team, but in my sphere of teams, just because it can help keep context on all of the moving pieces um, that are going on around me. So yeah, that's just one way that I try to <laughs> stay curious. I love that. That's that's awesome. So on a similar uh, note, I love we were talking about curiosity and someone had this question about continuous learning. So they asked, how do you foster a continuous learning mindset and how do you focus on upskilling uh, while having a really busy schedule? Shirzad, would you like to take a swing? Sure. Um, yeah. So to answer the first part of that question, I think uh, Datadog just makes it easy for someone to foster a learning, uh, foster a continuous learning mindset. Uh, we have tons of workshops that happens um, where you get to learn new things. Um, we also have access to a bunch of learning platforms, which is also amazing to be able to learn new tools and technologies. Um, and uh, yeah, what was the second part of that question? Sorry. <laughs> No, great. I love that you asked questions for the questions. It's awesome. Uh, Datadog makes it easy for continuous learning. And they all, their follow-up question was, how do you focus on upskilling while having a busy schedule? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, I think it's good to first differentiate between being busy and keeping busy for me personally. Sometimes I don't like to be stationary, so I just do extra stuff. Um, so when it comes to that, if it's the latter, I prefer to sort of cut back on things that are that I'm doing just to keep myself busy and make time with that. But uh, if I'm actually if I actually am busy, I find time here and there to sort of learn new tools or technologies. For example, when I'm commuting, I like to do a lot of research there. Um, I like to listen to audiobooks and YouTube videos. Um, so use whatever small time I have here and there to just sort of learn and grow as much as I can. I love that maximizing the time instead of, I mean, I guess there are some useful things on social media, but I like that you are digging out and mining that time that you have. It's, there's, it's amazing what we can do in a day if we just dedicate them in small pieces, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. So, yeah. So friends keep, um, keep, feel free rather to uh, write questions in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so someone else wrote, what has been your go-to strategy to make sure you're maximizing your opportunities at work? And do you, do you have some advice for goal setting? Uh, Samantha, would you like to take this? Um, so, yeah, the first half of the question is about, sorry. Yeah, it was it's, about these are big questions. These yeah, are very smart people with very smart questions. So let's break it down. What has been your go to strategy to make sure you're maximizing your opportunities at work? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, in terms of maximizing opportunities, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be well, okay. I think one side of the coin is just asking for them. So if you see something, um, a project that's, you know, starting within your team, asking about it and just verbalizing to your manager, or your coworkers, like, hey, I'm interested in this. Is there any part of the work that I could contribute to as well? So half of it is just like ag ag um, advocating for yourself. Um, but the other half, I would say, is also taking advantage of just opportunities that come your way and forming them into things that can help you grow. So um, we all just get like normal day-to-day -day tasks right at work, I'm sure. But I think looking at them from a different viewpoint and thinking, how can I make this task like an opportunity for myself to learn something new? Like maybe you can take it a step further or talk to someone else who's like involved in this space but making your your day-to-day -day just like an, an everyday opportunity for learning is a really essential part of always growing because then it doesn't always have to be you like going out of your way to like chase down different teams or other people 
um, just to stay growing. And I think Sherazad mentioned it, but Datadog, like the work that I do at Datadog is kind of a continuous learning opportunity for me. Um, so I think that's one of, definitely one of the upsides about the company is you want to be at a place where if you feel 100% comfortable, you should probably look for another job. I love that. Yeah. That means it's time to grow. And do you have any uh, advice for goal setting, Samantha? Yeah, I think goal setting for me, um, I'm, I'm not really the type of person to sit down like every month and like write down in a notebook like a goal I have for myself. That's probably very effective. But personally, I just kind of... Um, notice over time I try to reflect on the work I'm doing I think like performance or like self-evaluations is a good marker for that because like personally at work we have evaluations every six months and I try to use those as an opportunity to say like if if there's something I'm writing on the portion of my self-evaluation that's about like how I want to develop that I don't just write it there and then forget about it I like try and take it back with me and like have it in the back of my mind to try and think about like one of the things I've been trying to work on lately is just doing better with documentation so every day I have a task think like does this warrant a doc like does this warrant a change to our documentation if the answer is yes I don't ignore (laughs) the intuition Um, so that's just like one example for me, but I think it can be straight up goals or it can be just kind of an ongoing awareness of, of, of the areas that you're trying to improve in yourself. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Shrizad, would you like to speak to, uh, some of your go-to strategize, uh, strategies for maximizing your opportunities at work? Yeah. Um, I think, um, it's to communicate your, uh, your goals early and often uh, with your team lead, with your manager. That ultimately drives where, where, where you go. Um, the, the earlier the feedback that you get, the better for yourself because you have more time to fix it. Um, it's better to get a feedback three months into your hire versus, you know, a year into it. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, that's one of my go-to strategies just – try to communicate my goals as early and often as possible, just so I could get early feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And do you have any advice for how does Shrizad set goals and keep on them? It's an interesting question. Um, So personally for myself, I have long-term goals. um, And then I break them down into short-term goals, how I could eventually end up there. So it's very important for me. Uh, For example, when I was, when I first joined the company, I knew at a certain point I wanted to join the software engineering side of things. And from there on, I spoke to my manager, I spoke to my team leads, and we came up with a plan on what I could do in the short term and what goals that I could achieve within the next, let's say, a year or two to, to be able to move into engineering. I love that. Love that. So we're starting to get some questions in from the chat and some DMs. Thank you. Keep them coming, friends. Um, so next up, can can you all share about some tips on, so we were just talking about setting goals. So can we can we elaborate on communicating your goals uh, and your aspirations to managers specifically? Uh, Samantha, would you like to start us off? Yeah, I think um, most importantly, you need a manager that you trust and you feel like is advocating for you. Um, usually, uh, like if one of your goals is to get promoted or like get to the next level, you can't really do that without supportive management behind you. So definitely look for that in your career, but also kind of as chairs mentioned was just being upfront with your goals. So like not being afraid to tell your boss that you're like interested in I don't know, products management when you've been a software engineer for a long time, Um, because it takes having the conversation to have it even be a possibility. Um, One of the things like in my career that I do is um, 
in terms of like seeking promotion, if that's one of your goals is that I have like an Excel sheet um, that I update every now and again that has kind of the overall expectations of my role, which is software engineer too. And it also lists all of the expectations within Datadog of a senior software engineer, which is the next level above me. So revisiting this document, seeing how am I fulfilling like the needs of my role, but then looking ahead and seeing what what's the gap between where I'm at now and where I'm trying to get to and trying to use that as an opportunity to make more cr- concrete goals. So like maybe the next level above me is supposed to have like more, I don't know, design experience. Like where can I look for design experience in my day to day to try and get myself to that place? Um, yeah, that's what I do. I love that. And Shrizad, you spoke to this a bit earlier about speaking up early uh, about your your goals and aspirations, um, but how do you prefer to communicate that to managers and, and how would you suggest uh, some tips for folks in the form of communication? Yeah, um, obviously it's never good to blindside anybody. So it's important to give time for managers to have feedback as well. So if you have a certain goal you wanna, you want to achieve, uh, maybe send out a quick email saying, hey, um, can we chat next week for an hour or two? I want to discuss my career goals with you just so that they have enough information to go off as well. Um, sort of blind signing your managers could 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 uh, be negative at times. So it's important to just uh, allow them to have some, allow them some time to gather their thoughts, their feedback. From there, you have certain actionable items to, to sort of uh, take care of. Great. Yes. Love that. Thank you. Uh, Samantha, you got a, a question that was DM to me. Someone's curious, how did you get started with volunteering as a teacher's assistant and has uh-huh. it helped you at your work as an engineer? Um, yeah, so I got started, well, I originally got started with just like teaching computer science in general was when I I worked as a instructor for the Girls Who Code summer program. So I spent a few weeks teaching high school girls how to code. And I really loved that experience. So since like starting my full-time software engineer job, I've been trying to think about ways I could get back involved in something like that. So in December, I started volunteering with the Microsoft Teals program. So it basically just provides a curriculum and like volunteer support to public schools. For me, I don't think it's, I think it's beyond the New York city. I think it's nationwide. So, but yeah, so uh, they connected me with the school and I would definitely say that it's helped me in my day-to-day job because it kind of like takes you back to the days before you were a hundred percent like comfortable with coding or like 100% comfortable in your skills. I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to like the feeling of, oh, uh, it's Microsoft Teals. So uh, relate to the feeling of thinking, wow, like there's so much for me to learn. Like I, there's so much I don't know. Like I come to work and I work with people who have been in this industry for like 10, 20 years. And I feel like I know nothing, but when I like go back and work with the high schoolers, I like see them. It's just the beginning of, of their learning and see so many things that, you know, I learned like years ago. And and I feel like I have a greater appreciation for the, the knowledge I do have. And in that same vein, it, it kind of brings me back to the fundamentals. Um, and it really helps you be creative because sometimes you have ways of solving a certain problem. Like, I know how I'd write this code if I had like three years of experience to do it. But if I only have three months, I don't have the same background. And then I have to I have to think kind of with the mind of a high schooler and say, okay, if I didn't have all the knowledge that I know now, you know, like what what things would be confusing me? What what like what concepts would be hard to grasp? And so I feel like in terms of communication, it's been 
a really big learning and improvement area for me because you always have to look at every situation and remember that the person you're speaking to has two months of experience and you have like personally like four years. So it helps to not remember that you should never assume anything about the person you're talking to, especially when you're trying to explain something or be clear. So, but yeah, I I love volunteering. Thank you for sharing that. That's fantastic. Okay, friends, uh, we're getting a bunch of great questions uh, in the chat now in the Q&A. I appreciate that. So we're going to keep peppering those in. Um, Someone asked, could you please elaborate on the strategies to position ourselves for internal mobility? How can we make sure we're being considered for new positions that would normally require a different background? Uh, Shirzad, would you like to kick us off? Yeah. Um, so at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I would say communication is key. Um, communicating early and often um, and asking the right questions, such as what, what do I need to do to better position myself for position X or Y? Um, yeah, uh, in regards to making sure uh, you're being considered for a certain role. I think uh, being at the right company, such as Datadog is the best way to go because we all, we foster such an open communication that I'm able to communicate with my manager to see why I was passed in a certain position or what I could do better. Um, even if, if I don't feel comfortable speaking to my manager, um, I'm more than comfortable to speak with HR or someone above my manager. So, yeah. Great, thank you for that. Uh, Samantha, for internal mobility and making sure we're being considered for new positions that might require a different background. Um, I think Sarah Zab would probably know more about this than me. Like personally, I, I have, I graduated with a computer science degree. I interned at Datadog as a software engineer, and here I am still as a software engineer. But if I could approach it from a different way maybe there's like always going to be lots of opportunities at work like some of them are a whole new job and others of them though are also smaller programs that you can involve yourself in so like for me sometimes there's things that come up like oh do you want to be in this like focus group on like this certain like coding language let's say or like oh there's this other opportunity within work to like learn more about security so being open to like those types of opportunities that come up and it goes back again to just communicating that with your manager and making sure they're aware that you're interested in these programs and that you you're looking for opportunities to learn new things great advice so i'm going to go to a couple of the questions that i got in the qa some of these are anonymous so someone asked uh Can you speak to how to grow your career in engineering while not being worried about the field you choose to focus on might be obsolete or impacted by AI? For instance, chat GBT has taken some of this uh, into consideration. So do you have any thoughts about that, Shrizad? I know we've talked about curiosity and endless flexibility. Those seem to be relevant on this topic here. Yeah, certainly. Um, I think keeping up with new technologies and new tools is always going to put you above the competition. Um, And also just soft skills that we talked about earlier, such as problem solving and adaptability, those are very important as well. Because in the the engineering world, um, your skills are very transferable between tools. Um, I remember when I first joined my team, I was tasked with working on a tool that was primarily written in Golang. And I was a language that I have never ever seen in my life before. And to me, it was just a complete different uh different world. And because I had my past in other languages, it was able, I was able to quickly pick up this new language much more efficiently and just and just uh start successfully contributing to the code base. So being able to adapt uh, using your previous skills, I think that's gonna be very important. Yeah, absolutely. Anything you'd like to add on that, Samantha? 
I think you covered it. <laughs> that was pretty thorough. You know, and uh, I'll do a follow up here because someone had, and we can just kind of put a bow on this, I think, Shirzad, uh, when you're talking about you learned this other language and you jumped in, someone asked about if there is a gap in knowledge, such as not knowing they were uh, Python, for example, but have knowledge of other required languages, how do you state the gap but not rule yourself out for the job? So here's a job opportunity. Maybe I don't know Python yet, but should I still apply? Yeah, certainly. I think, um, again, in the world of tech, skills are very transferable. Um, it's not like, I mean, certainly if, if you know one language in and out, um, you're gonna, it's going to take you a little bit to pick up another language just because every language has its own quirks. Um, but if you're applying for a certain position, you can certainly look at the job description and see what they require off of you and spend a little bit of time just learning the basics of it. And when you're in the interview process or the recruitment process, you could you know, communicate that you have done X, Y, and Z in language A, and, you know, you're able to transfer these same skills into language B. And if you have the time, maybe work on a project in the language B, uh, in the language Python, and show off this project in your interview process, I think that that'll also be another another uh, plus, especially if you come from a non-traditional tech background. Awesome. Thanks for that. And Samantha has dropped some very cool links in the chat. There was a lot of <laughs> Uh, excitement and support about the uh, volunteering that you do. So you can direct your eyeballs and fingers over there if you want to check it out. Uh, okay, friends, we are right past the half hour mark. So we have about 25 minutes left. If you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'd love to get to as many of them as possible, but if you send them all in the last five minutes, it's not gonna happen. So feel free to keep peppering them in. These are great, great questions. So next up, someone asked, before accepting a new role, how do you evaluate if that position will serve your growth goals? Samantha, would you like to start us off with this? Yeah. Um... I mean, I think first it's important to know what your growth goals are. So walk into it, having something in mind that you're looking for. It doesn't have to be something super specific. Like maybe it's just that it's different from what you're working on now. Like that's fine. But I think it's important to just give opportunities a chance and a good way to evaluate an opportunity would just be to talk with the manager, like hiring person. I would always recommend if you're going to start a new job to always make sure that you're able to talk to your direct boss for the position. So like maybe sometimes it's just going to be like a hiring manager or something. If it's like an internal move, reach out to the team. Um, but I think you're not going to know fully what an opportunity is, is going to be able to offer you unless you're actually talking to the people that you'll be working with and getting a firsthand account, not just like relayed information from someone else. And at least for me, like when I've known an opportunity was going to be good for me was when I just like had intuition about it. So like, I, I don't always a lot of times in my career, I'm just kind of following breadcrumbs and I think that's fine. So this seems like something that would, I would learn from, uh, maybe I'll go for it. Like, you don't have to know exactly what you want, but I feel like a person's intuition can tell them a lot. And like, for example, with my job at Datadog, like I originally accepted it just because I had just felt my entire recruiting process had just been like, really personal and I felt everyone I talked to just seemed nice and like a person I would want to work with. So even just that, I think will go a long way. Um, I love that. Thank you. Uh, Shrizad, anything that you'd like to add about for accepting a new role, how do we evaluate if the position will serve our uh, growth goals for our career? Yeah, um, I think Samantha answered that beautifully. Um, I echo everything she said. Um, 
a thing I would add is when you're interviewing, when you're interviewing, you need to keep in mind interviews are a two-way street. So make sure you're asking the right questions and you know, asking about the role you're interested in and sort of growth opportunities that are available within the company. Yeah, it's always important things to ask. Um, yeah, during the interview process, you are interviewing the company for yourself just as much as the interviews company. The company is interviewing you for them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a question from the chat in in this uh, on this topic here. Aside from networking, how do we make our applications stand out so that we can get to that initial interview? Uh, Shirzad, do you want to keep the flow going there? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, I think um, tailoring your resume to the role is a very important aspect of it. Um, so thoroughly read the job description and see what what skills that are relevant to this role and tailor your resume to the point where you mentioned these specific skills in your resume. I think that'll help it uh, stand out quite a bit. Awesome. Samantha, any thoughts on that? Helping stand out on the resume? Yeah, I think tailoring your resume is really important. Um, but also just, you know, not being afraid to put things on your resume that maybe feels a little bit irrelevant, especially if you're just starting out. Like um, a while back, I was helping someone with their resume who was coming from a restaurant background and was transitioning into like a Salesforce admin role and wanted to know what to put on their resume. And they're like, I have nothing to put. Like I've been working in restaurants for so long. And I was like, well, what did, what did you do at the restaurant? And he, he was like, oh, well, I was a server. And then I moved up to like a manager after two years. And I, and I was like, well, how many people did you manage? And like, how, how many people visited the restaurant? And it just like created this picture that this guy had done like some really impressive work you know, managing and communicating and like overseeing a team and all of this stuff. Like, and I was like, that's all of those represent soft skills that are like very applicable to the jobs that you're looking for. So like looking past just like the hard skills part of it, like it's easy to say like, oh, I don't know Python, I can't apply. But we all have like really strong skills that we can take. I mean, no matter what, all of us spent like, what, 10, 12 years, like just going through like middle school and high school. Like, it's not like we had our brains turned off during all of that. Like we, you learn a lot. So just knowing and like seeing the value in that and like highlighting in your resume. Um, if, if you are in that position where you're trying to transition careers. Awesome. Love that. Uh, we got a question from the chat. Annie P. S. What challenges and hurdles have you faced while advancing in your career? Shazad, would you like to kick us off here? Um, yeah, sure. Um, some of the challenges I would say is more personal, um, more related to my own, I guess, uh, thinking process. I used to have this thought process that if I want to position X, Y, and Z, I need these skills and I don't have these skills. And I used to limit myself with that. I think uh, having the mindset of, I might not know this yet, but I'll learn it if I get to this role, I think helped me out quite a bit. Um, that was a, certainly a challenge to get over, um, especially when I first sort of jumped into the engineering side of things. I was kind of nervous to see how how uh, how much I could contribute. But once I sort of like break, broke down that wall, I was able to learn as I go and communicate with my teammates and be able to contribute to the team. That's fantastic. Thank you. How about you, Samantha? Any hurdles and challenges while advancing in your career? Um, yeah, I think I would say that a lot of times a hurdle for your career can just be your personal life. Like I think we've all had times where we're supposed to go to work, but like, oh my gosh, I'm just having a bad day or, you know, it can be a million things that are going on in your personal life. So I would say it's important to like, unless you're 
taking care of yourself like at home you're never going to be able to do well at work so when I like don't have the space to think about work after work I don't I put it to bed and I focus on myself and so it's important to like not be afraid to to do that and not feel like you're falling behind and I think the way that I'm able to do that is by going to work and just like focusing on the task at hand and doing you know my best doing good work that I know I can do but not leaving feeling guilty that like oh I'm not like listening to the latest podcast on like tech news or something like We all have like seasons in life where we can focus more on like work or maybe you're like focusing more on like your mental health or something and just like giving your space, giving yourself space to do that prevents you from getting completely burned out with your work goals. And I think it's been a big part of me being able to, to do well in my career. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And to point to the chat here, we had uh, some great resources uh because more folks were curious about resumes it's a hot topic uh my teammate here at power to fly paloma posted a great chat and learn seminar that's all about standing out amongst the sea and resumes there's other great ones too so i encourage you to check out that one posted as well as the power to fly youtube channel where you can see a bunch of different topics including resumes And then also shout out to Izzy, who is with Datadog. And for that next step, when you're preparing for your interview, there's a great resource that Datadog has provided that's over on the Power to Fly website. Check that out and then maybe poke around. Then maybe you can see some of the job listings and you can put all of it into action. So please do check out those resources. Okay, friends. So we got about 15 minutes left. So keep those questions coming. Uh, Okay, let's move on to the topic of mentorship. Has mentorship played a role in either of your career developments? And if so, how were you able to connect with your mentors? Uh, Shrizad, would you like to jump in? Yeah, certainly. I think uh, mentorship has played a massive role in my career. Um, So my mentor has been someone who's been able to sort of unblock me on tough challenges, as well as just getting up to speed with everything, especially when I first joined the engineering side, I was lost and having somebody to go to when you have difficult questions is very important. Um, And to make the most of the mentor-mentee relationship, I think uh, it's important to to hold yourself accountable in terms of if you face a challenge at work, it's better to first try and fix something yourself or try to fix, uh, try and figure something out yourself before running to your uh, mentor. That will allow you to, first of all, learn as much as you can. Um, and then second, you have uh, someone to fall back on if you're in, if you're stuck in a difficult position. That's really good advice. You know, there, there'd be often times when I'm stuck at something and I'm about to send an email and it's like, but what if I took two minutes to see if I can figure it out instead? I was like, oh yeah, there's a lot of times I can save someone else the time because oftentimes the times they get back to me, I've already figured it out anyway. So it's just like, Let's just take that extra time. So I love that. Uh, Samantha, how about you with mentors in in your career journey? Uh, How to connect with them? How to make the most of a mentor-mentee relationship? Um, Yeah, I would say it's really important to have people that you look up to. Like, um, for me, like, I work with several people that I, like, really look up to and think that they have a lot of like skills and knowledge that I can learn from. So just taking opportunities when I'm working with them to hook their brain a little bit and um, get knowledge out of them. And I would also say not getting too focused on just like having one like end all be all mentor I feel like it's similar to friends. Like a lot of us have friends for one friend to talk with, the one friend to, I don't know, go out dancing with. You you need several people um, to look up to. So um, 
you know, there's people I look up to for technical know-how for like management skills or soft skills. Um, I think someone put in the chat asking about how it is to be a woman in a male dominated field. And I would say a big part of it is finding senior women and like women at the company that you look up to has been like really critical for me to just like finding that community and, and connecting with other women, especially women that I think are very impressive and very successful. And there's definitely several of them here at data dog that I look up to. And um, yeah, it, it can be knowledge giving and it can also just having mentorship just contributes to the, the feeling of community you have at work. I love that. And do either of you, it sounds like Samantha, you've helped other people that are coming in. Do either of you, are you in a mentor position now, or is that something you would consider doing for other people in the future? <laughs> yeah, I, at Data Dog, we have like a, a like structured mentorship program. So like we have like a men mentorship program for like our community groups. Like there's a mentorship program within, for instance, the Women of Data Dog group. And there's also mentorship programs for new hires. So right now I'm mentoring um, someone who just came onto our team. And so like we meet and, you know, I ask her how things are going. We talk about technical stuff and I ask her about just how general things life is. So I think Datadog's pretty strong in that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's nice both. Being mentor and mentee are, are both very helpful and I enjoy both of them. I love that. Yeah, it helps to to give back and to realize, realize it helps me realize sometimes if I'm helping someone out like, oh, I do have experience in X, Y, and Z now and I can mm -hmm. pay that forward. And it can be a helpful reflection. Like when you were talking about helping the kids, the high school kids, you're like, oh, they're just starting this career journey they're learning rather they're just starting their learning journey they're like oh I used to be there and it helps us it helps me anyway to reflect back and and know that I can I can help other people and you know mm -hmm. just okay here we are here we are <laughs> um, yeah Trizad how about you are, are you uh, a mentor as well yeah yeah um I've mentored a few people and onboarded them to our team so it's been an amazing amazing process um you know, going back to what you said, what Samantha said, it's always nice to reflect on, uh, reflect by seeing uh, this new individual that's joining your team and reflect how much you've learned and how much you've grown. Sometimes we get sort of stuck in our own bubble and it's hard to see um, how far you've come or it's sort of easy to downplay your own skills and your own attributes and having this sort of mentee allows you to reflect. Um, and it also helps you grow as an engineer as well because from teaching your mentee, you're able to learn better communication skills. And sometimes uh, I, I, people say, um, unless you know how to teach what you know to others, you don't really know what you're teaching. So I think that's a, it's a yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. That's wise words. Okay, friends. So we have just about 10 minutes left, which is actually a little less than 10 minutes. So if you have questions, now is the time to get them in my friends okay so uh next up what are some ways to better understand the business side of engineering problems at work uh samantha would you like to jump in um i think it's just for me a matter of just asking people like the way my team is structured is there's you know, some people in leadership around me that are more focused on a customer relationship. So in my role, I'm usually more focused on, you know, the engineering and kind of what's hidden away from the customer. So just, you know, talking to them about their work, um, asking to like, you know, sit in on a conversation if you're really curious or a lot of people, if you're at a good company, which how I feel Datadog is, people will be open to sharing about their work with you. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good way. Um, just 
keeping that conversation open um, because usually the information is available to you if you just seek it out. It's just, you know, I think probably my product manager doesn't thinks I want to be shielded from things. You know, a lot of people only they are they already have a lot of responsibilities. They don't want to you know take on even more. But if you're curious, I think people are very open. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shrizad, anything you'd like to uh, add on that? Yeah, um, going back to what Samantha said earlier, I think curiosity is key. Um, if you're curious about the business side of things, there there's information out there. You can certainly seek it out yourself. And here at Data Dog, we have a very open uh, open environment. So you could also set up meetings with, let's say, product managers or uh, individuals that are more customer focused side and try to get a better understanding of the the, the bigger picture. Awesome. Thank you for that. And more shout outs to Izzy in the chat, posting great resources, another great link for finding mentors, four steps and tips with one of our partners. So many great resources. Thank you for providing those, Izzy. Super helpful. Uh, okay, friends, we have time for just a couple more questions. So if you got any, if not now, when? So can we talk about uh, what would be some, what's some of your main advice for maintaining ourselves as active participants in our professional path? Uh, I really love the wording of this question. You know, uh, I forget, was it you, Samantha, that said like, oh, if you're getting a little too comfortable, it might be time to move, right? So it's easy. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to be like, oh, I'm good. I'm coasting, you know? So how do we stay as an active participant? Uh, in our professional path, Samantha? Um, I would say for me, um, like something that comes to mind is like, I remember being in school and people would always say like, oh, like just like follow what you're interested in or like follow your passion. And I remember just being like, I literally have no idea what that is. Like I, you know, and so I think if you're, if you know exactly what you want, awesome. If you don't, I think what's worked for me is just kind of following the trail. So just like trying new things and being open to opportunities. So, you know, if my boss asked me like, what do you want to work on? I, it's not like I always have a clear answer, but I can ask what are the options of what to work on and just like making an educated guess sometimes is all you can do about what you think could expand your knowledge or maybe get you deeper knowledge on a certain subject so but you're not going to know unless you try so I would say just trying as many things as possible is important um and also, you know, along the same vein is when you're trying things, just being attuned with how you feel and like what your thoughts and criticisms are, like always make time to like reflect back on what you're doing. Sometimes until we start like thinking critically, we don't realize our opinions or, or qualms or like likes about what we're doing. For me personally, I always feel like a sign for me that I'm starting to be in a place where I, I can make decisions about what I want is that I start having complaints <laughs> about what I'm doing. So like when I start feeling like I have opinions or complaints about what's going on, I think it's important to listen to those. And those like thoughts in the back of your head are, are what's pushing you toward what you really want to do. So you just kind of have to listen listen to yourself and sometimes it's not super clear it's like a big dream to like I don't know work in AI but you can still keep yourself pointed in the right direction oh so much beautiful stuff in there Samantha follow the, trails, <laughs> the breadcrumbs intuition listen to yourself I love all of that thank you uh Shrizad any thoughts on how we can maintain uh and and be active participants in our professional path yeah, I think uh, this this question sort of 
ties it in ties in pretty well with our initial discussions. I think communication is key. So communicating often is very important. And going off of what Samantha said, holding yourself accountable, holding holding yourself to higher standards. Um, if you're too comfortable, that's probably not a good thing. Um, you always want to make yourself uncomfortable, learn new tools, new technologies. And I, I don't know where I've heard this quote before, but uh, there's a quote that comes to my mind, uh, be so good that you cannot be ignored. So I think that, <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, friends. So we have just five minutes left. So what we're going to do, that's not the screen we want. There it is. That's the screen we want. So we asked some questions in advance with our team here to Samantha and Trezad. Um, one, the first question was, how would you describe the culture in one word, friendly? And that's clear. These are two friendly folks right here. <laughs> but I will give you the opportunity to elaborate on that one word now, Samantha. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think a lot of why I like my job is just like the people I get to work with. There's a lot of really nice um, and kind people here. Data Dogs are really friendly and sociable environment. Um, yeah, that's my favorite part of working here. And I think in work at the end of the day, it's just the people that you spend your days with. So at least to me, it's the most important part. Yeah, I love that. And, uh, Shrizad, we asked you, what's your favorite part about working at Data Dog? You said the culture. So talk to me about that. Yeah, uh, I mean, the culture is so amazing that I had to answer question number two with the question number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, the people that I work with are so amazing. Uh, we have such an open communication policy here, which is really, really great. Even during my interview and recruitment process, I remember having discussions about career growth with both my uh, with both people who interviewed me and my recruiters as well. So I think that's really awesome. I love that. And then when we asked, what are your top tips for someone who is interviewing? Uh, you both chimed in and said, prepare well and know that your interviewer wants you to succeed. Research the company and the role that you are interested in. Absolutely great advice. Uh, thank you both so much for making the time today. It's been such a wonderful chat. Uh, if people want to keep the conversation going with y'all, what's the best way to reach out? Samantha? Um, I think the event posted my LinkedIn along with it. You can message me on LinkedIn if you have any other questions. Great. And Trezad, LinkedIn is good for you as well? Yep, for sure. Um, feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn. Awesome. And you can uh, check out all the amazing resources on the Power to Fly website slash uh, with uh, or the link that will drop in actually uh, directly to the data dog uh, page where you can check out all those resources and other videos and all the job listings. Uh, and these last uh, minute here to uh, Samantha Shrizad, is there anything you'd like to uh, share the last little wisdom moments of wisdom, some diamonds in the rough for our listeners on that job hunt and, and in advancing their their careers. Uh, Sam, any last words of advice? <laughs> I would just say to be confident, um, especially in times like this. I think when the job market isn't as healthy as it usually is, it can be easy to apply and you get rejected and then you just like feel really down on yourself. Um, but try and just, just keep confidence in yourself because at the end of the day, like you're a lot more than just your resume and that's all the companies can look at. So um, <laughs> keep your head up. <laughs> that's my advice. Thank you, Samantha and Shrizad. Yeah, I have to agree with Samantha there. Um, just keep your head up, keep going. Um, I sound like a motivational speaker. <laughs> the motivational speaker is the entire, yeah. the entire you interview. You do it. Everyone yeah. can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for this folks we dropped it in the chat check out powertofly.com slash company slash datadog and they uh and there you can see all the awesome hiring opportunities so Shirzad, samantha round of applause to you 
Thank you so much for making the time. And friends listening in and participating, thank you for writing the questions. Thank you for making the time today. Showing up is the first step. So you are on the right track. So thank you all. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and we will see you at the next event. Thanks everybody. Thank you everyone. Bye.